I just talked to the National Weather Service, and they are saying it's going to be completely cloud covered. What do you say that's, to everyone outside? That's my fault. <laughs> no, I get behind on my email. Uh, I'm sorry about that. Let me. And there's no connectivity with the phone now, so. There's not. No, it's still spectacular. It turns tonight, in the middle of the day. And it will especially, I think, get quite cool. It'll get, you know, coldish. Very, very, uh, it's unusual. But uh, we can't control the clouds much yet. We'll, just, we'll deal. What, what are we going to be able to see uh, other than darkness? Without uh, being able to look at the sun? That's why we'll run this test. But I'm sure, you know, you can look right at the sun through the clouds with your, with your safety, uh, your uh, eclipse or solar glasses. So I'll be doing that. But the big thing, for, I just tell everybody, you want to be in the moment. You just don't, everybody's so crazy right now for cell phone video, cell phone pictures. Uh, they forget to be present uh, mentally, to be engaged. So that's, maybe the clouds will help people be more engaged, maybe. Put down the phones, put on the glasses. For a second, yeah. Or how about for a minute and 34 seconds? Two minutes and 34 seconds. Two, I mean, I was joking. Yeah. Thank you, Daniel. <laughs> Two minutes, 34 seconds. And uh, uh, so how has been your Nebraska experience so far? Oh, I, I always have a good time here, I have to say. I was here at this very monument um, five years ago, yeah, 2012. It's, it's great. It's cool. It's, I mean, you realize how much the Homestead Act affected the world let alone Nebraska. You know, homesteaders left here and went west. Yes, there were some interactions with other people that had shown up from Asia, but all in all, it changed the course of human history. How often does anybody use the expression Silicon Valley? It wouldn't be there without Nebraska. So. And, you know, uh, this part of the world feeds the world. My colleagues, I have some friends who are uh, academic, they're professors at the University of Copenhagen, mm -hmm. and they just talk all the time about food from the Midwest feeds the entire planet. Mm -hmm. Without this agriculture, you, you couldn't have 7.3 or 7.4 billion people. So uh, it's great to be here. One last question, uh, and I'm sure you've been asked this question a lot. How great, what, what is the impact of this kind of event at the national scale, global scale, for science literacy, science acceptance, that kind of thing right now. Well, I hope country. it gets us all to accept science, uh, to embrace it, let's say, because first of all, it's intellectually a way better way to go than pretending that your opinion is as good as data collected by diligent researchers. That's one thing. But the other thing, what keeps the U.S. in the game, and this eclipse is largely the United States thing, from the Pacific to the Atlantic, what keeps the U.S. in the game is our ability to innovate, and uh, that comes from science. You look at, I just was marveling at the cornfields here, the corn's much closer together than when I was a kid. The technology in corn seeds, or corn, has advanced tremendously, and you don't have the European corn borer eating all the corn. When I was a kid, you, we would buy corn that would have worms. It would, the corn borer worm was in it, or caterpillar, was in it. And uh, I guess it's not a caterpillar. Anyway, you don't want that. And so the technology of agriculture has enabled us to feed a great many more people than we could even 20 years ago. And it, it, it's a, a race against nature, uh, against uh, evolution, but it's a worthy one. We are in the game. You know, humans now move more soil and rock than nature does. Wow. It's really an astonishing wow. thing to consider. More than earthquakes, mudslides, mountain building with continental plates running into each other. And uh, so you have to, first of all, once you realize that, I think it's important to accept that we are in charge now. Humankind is in charge of the planet, so we have to. We have a responsibility to take care of it, and so I hope this eclipse reminds us all of the importance of science and discovery to the quality of our life. I hope this eclipse brings us together and changes the world. We're just not in charge of the clouds yet. No, we people have tried to be. 
people have tried seeding clouds for a better part of a century. It's very difficult, apparently. Eventually. It's the, uh, I think it's the size of the problem that you don't realize. When you have, when you have a cloud that's just a kilometer by a kilometer, cumulus cloud, let me just do this number. Let's say then, how thick would it be? 500 meters thick, 300. Let's go a third of, third of a kilometer thick, so that's one by one by a third. And then in cubic meters, that's uh, a million times, that's 300 million tons of water. <laughs> and so uh, that's, that would be at the density of ocean water. So it's, let's say it's a hundredth of that or a thousandth of that. We're still talking about millions of tons of water when you look at a cloud. It's really, it's an astonishing thing. Yeah. That's pretty cool. So uh, respect those clouds today, people. <laughs> and if it does, I saw lightning earlier. If it does start to rain, I hope it. I hope the lightning and so on holds off till uh, two thirty four. Yeah, one, one oh four. Well, yeah, at least till yeah, yeah. one oh four. Hoping for two thirty because it. I've seen a couple partial eclipses. It's really weird. I mean, it, it gets dark. Like, what's going on? Like, is it getting cloudy? Not not that cloudy. It's. The sun's behind the moon for crying out loud. Anything else you'd like to add? Well, celebrate both the the beauty of it. It's awe-inspiring to see this. This you're very familiar with the moon. You're very familiar with the sun. Well, today they interact in a way that may never happen again in your lifetime, where you're under, in the path of it. And then the other thing is celebrate the science that humans did the equivalent of celestial rocket science to determine the paths and uh, duration of this to within fractions of a second. No tarot card reader, no psychic, no homeopathic anybody can do anything like that. This is authentic science. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Cool. Carry on. <laughs>